will not find a single mustard uh, in Zurich. And I think it's not so much a stand of, uh, you know, a dogmatic stand. It's because uh, we were convinced, Sening was convinced that you have to use living tissue to avoid complication, mechanical complication, especially on the long run. So, um, do you have... Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the second thing is, I'm back to, to the title here. How do you point that? Okay. Back to the title. I, mean, I receive that palliative or even more. W what is the definition of palliative? And I think palliative life is palliative. We're going to live 85 years, 90 years, but also the quality of life in the past years will not be so nice. I can tell you it already started with me. If you have an ASD, probably your life expectancy and quality of life will be decreased. You, it might be 75 years. Probably if you correct that and you achieve that, you will call that curative and we'll, we're right. But that for the TGA, it's almost not one year. And uh, those saying must have reach 40, 50 years. So I can already tell you this is a very good palliation, actually, because they would uh, all die. But let's look at that a little bit. Again, the natural history, not very many uh, kids would live, those with VSD, but uh, all those uh, without VSD usually die within a few weeks or few months. And I don't think they would be any long-term survivor. I'm speaking for 20 or 30 years uh, with this anatomy. We all know that, you know, the, the blood, uh, oxygen blood goes to, to the lungs. And we have those two guys, Orca Senning, William Merstad. Within two years, they described the two operations. We saw that already. It looks very complicated when you look at the, at the first reports of a Senning operation. But also for this uh, mustard, we, we understand a little bit better how the blood would flow that. But we also understand that there were a lot of uh, right angles there and probably a lot of energy loss, which is not good on the atrial level when you have no pump uh, be before that. So the arterial switch operation, we have this problem here, ventricular arterial discordance with a mixing of blood there. And what we're doing with the staining or muscle procedure, we're just putting another switch, another discordance, atrial ventricular uh, discordance there. And we're just completing a corrected transposition. You know, nature made a DTGA and we're creating a corrected uh, TGA there. A few things about the procedure, how we do it. Um, you know, we have here, it all happens at the atrial level. Normally, we have two levels, and a septum between the right and the left. But if you consider the atrium, you can see already three levels. One for the tricuspid valve, one for the mitral valve, and below one for the pulmonary valve. And this is this principle which was taken for the sending procedure. We have a septum between the tricuspid and the mitral valve. This is how it looks like, like. We have the infravena cava, and remember it is deep. Normally the blood here goes through the foramen ovale directly to the mitral valve, so that the embryo will have more oxygen, and the supravena cava goes through the tricuspid. There is a scud between the two cava. So we'll take the septum from this level here and bring it one level below under the tricuspid valve, and then we wrap that between the two valves, and the blood from here and from there we then go through the mitral valve and the blood of the pulmonary brain come around and reaches the tricuspid valve. This is the principle of the staining procedure. We usually close that if we have enough tissue with the atrium, but usually we take uh, some uh, pericardial patch, either a flap patch like that or just a disconnected one. So those are the survival. Again, so we have a good survival, maybe better for the sending procedure. Just uh, I, I draw your attention to the loss of the 20% here because this is due to operative mortality. And probably today, with our techniques, our knowledge, we would have even better results here and the curves would be higher than that. And uh, but the problems are there. And there are three folds. We have electrophysiological problem, mechanical and functional problem. Let's go over that. And you can imagine here, actually, with this big procedure here, we lose all the function, I think, of the atrium. And they are rhythm, they are atrial kick, they are capacitance. We'll come back to that. To raise the atrial kick, obviously, you will have no effective contraction because everything has been cut and you also have even patch here. So don't expect uh, um, an atrial wave on, on your contraction here. Let's look at the capacitance. If we look at that, the ventricular filling is done mostly in the atrium here. The blood here in the cava has to wait for the second beat to reach the ventricle. That means the ventricle will be filled out even in tachycardia. Just look at the atrial fibrillation. They don't have the atrial kick, but usually every contraction of the ventricle creates a pressure, creates an outflow of blood. 
This is a thinning procedure here with this intra-channel. Uh, the blood here will go to the ventricle, and you can imagine the distance and the time it takes to reach the ventricle. And if you go in uh, tachycardia, you will never have the possibility to fill out your ventricle uh, on, on this situation here. Now, similarities, we just mentioned the corrected uh, transposition of the great arteries, and we know we have some natural lung survivors. Some patients reach 70, uh, 60, 70 years, but remember, they have a completely functioning atrium here with the atrial kick, with the capacity I just mentioned, and most uh, of those long-term survivors, they still have a synapse rhythm, or we can pace them and uh, recover synchronization on those patients. The physiologic complications are due to this uh, problem here. We have very many suture lines here around the sinus here, and also remember we have the artery to the sinus coming in an atomic uh, situation here above uh, in 40% or 60%, but most of the times they come from below, and probably has, it has been cut or taken in a suture during surgery. And the sinus node dysfunction is not really so much uh, immediately after the operation. It is an ongoing process. And after 20 years, more than half of the patient have lost the sinus node. And then we have the re-entry tachycardia. You can imagine around those lines here, around the internal part of the atrium, how a wave can turn around and create a flutter, for instance. The trouble with arrhythmia, this is that. Freedom from active arrhythmia with time goes down. This is after 25 years. You can see half of the patient have those problems. And if you look at the need for pacemaker, it's also something uh, very uh, common, especially in complex TGA, much more than in simple TGA. But the other problem, the trouble with arrhythmia is a sudden death. And it accounts for more than half of the deaths of the sending procedures. What it is due to, I mean, it's difficult to know. We know those patients with arrhythmia are more prone to sudden death, probably those with a QRS over 140, ST inversion, but those are very weak signs to really know the correlation is not so good. We know the patient in new heart rate or reduced function do sudden deaths, but we don't always know what it is due to. Some have ventricular arrhythmia, probably those with VSD, especially with, if the surgeon closed the VSD with a ventriculotomy, but usually we have not touched the ventricle. I think the limited preload in tachycardia, exactly this capacitance problem, also plays a role on those patients because many sudden deaths happen during exercise. And also don't forget, we have unfavorable coronary artery. We never analyze that on those patients. We were made uh, uh, aware of this problem where we do the arterial switch because it was difficult to translocate. And we know the intramural course or a course between the two great arteries is also a risk of sudden deaths. And we probably have three to five patients uh, percent of patients with this problem which have never been analyzed and might uh, die during exercise or simply uh, at rest. Obstructive problem, we just, I remember you, you know, the intervena cava were more on the level of the mitral valve and the superior on the tricuspid valve. And we see the problem mostly on the superior vena cava, but also sometimes on the inferior vena cava or sometimes directly on the mitral valve. Now we also have pulmonary vein uh, stenosis uh, around the patch here, around the channel here, especially in mesocardic heart. And if I look at only the intraatrial mechanical problem, you can see the thinning fares better than the muscle, probably because they never have any calcification here and we have a growth potential of uh, living tissue. We also have many chance on, on those. Now we also have other uh, 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 mechanical problem, probably more due to the heart than the surgeon. For instance, subpulmonary stenosis here, because we don't have a normal shape of the right ventricle, a bulging of the septums, and many times we also have some tissue here in the outflow tract. And another problem is pulmonary hypertension, which develops with time. It's reported in 5 to 10 percent, but we have he had a VSD, especially because the correction was done pretty late, uh, 30 years ago, after 8 months or 10 months. We see those problems coming out in one third of those patients. So those uh, are the risk factors for this pulmonary hypertension. Last, the functional complication. We always have heard that this ventricle, triangular ventricle, is not like this sphincter ventricle here. This is probably true, but I think we have also exaggerated that because 20 years ago we wanted absolutely to impose the arterial switch with right, but we spoke a lot of that. But I think the right ventricle is also not so a bad ventricle to be uh, on the systemic part. Still, if we look at the survival of right ventricle in this series here, which was published last year, 
simple TGA, you can see they are really well, they go very well over time. The complex TGA makes the problem. Again, it's because some of them were cut to close the VSD. And also remember, there was a time when we were doing the correction without cardioplegia. And you can imagine here that the time of ischemic uh, was much longer than on simple uh, TGA, uh, simple correction. And also, um, well, this is uh, the problem. What are the indications for the arterial switch? DTGA probably in third world because those kids come late and you know you cannot on an economical and also uh, investment on energy, money and everything do a retraining and a double switch. And I think many people are still doing the thing or the master with right there. But by us, we have a few cases of atrioventricular discordance and probably this is an atomic correction here. We spoke about the TGA VSD Eisenmenger, but many surgeons will still uh, prefer the arterial switch on, on this situation, and we have the correct TG, uh, transposition that the double switch to correct them. This is the example here of a, a corrected transposition. This is how it looks like uh, afterwards, after bending, sometimes you have to repair the root here, and uh, if you have a good pulmonary artery, you will have a, a double switch. And those patients, if you have a stenosis here, you will do a rustily like uh, procedure with many problems on, on this side. Well, sometimes, especially here, I come back, uh, we have, you know, the heart, especially uh, in the middle of the chest, what we call the mesocardium. You can imagine the, the atrium are extremely posterior. For the surgeon, it's not so an easy situation. This is a normal heart here, and you create a sending or a mustard in those patients. You are working from here, and you see exactly what you're doing. This is the heart on the mesocardia, and it's much more difficult to create this channel without any uh, obstruction on the superior or inferior vein cava, but also on the pulmonary veins here, because you have not so much place there. Well, interesting also approach on those corrected transposition is actually the emicening or emimerstered. Again, the superior vena cava is at the level of the mitral valve, and instead of doing everything, some surgeons do here a routing of the superior vena cava directly to the mitral valve and the cavopulmonary anastomosis. This is a one and a half repair, I would say, and here you have an arterial switch. Probably not a lot of us would do that when you have to the possibility to do an anatomical repair at this level here. But if you have to use a conduit uh, like a Rastelli, probably it's uh, something you will have longer uh, life of this conduit because it left blood and um, it will probably go longer on, on the long run. This is an interesting uh, approach. I have no experience myself with it. So my conclusion, sending more start, palliation or even more, just remember that those curves are very good, I think, especially if you take out the operative mortality that we would not have here. But still, it's probably no more because the arterial switch, if you look at this, uh, we published this study with Pascal a few years ago, well, it's very, very much stable. But still, we are only 14 years and we don't know what's going to happen. My concerns are coronary arteries. If you do an angiogram after an arterial switch, we have like a dead tree. It really resembles what we see after transplantation and, uh, and a lot of treatment. Second thing is, remember, when we cut that, we also do a sympathectomy of the coronary arteries. They are no longer uh, the uh, neurology, um, the, um, how do you say, uh, is lost. And uh, uh, if, you, if you analyze the coronary reserves, usually they are very bad uh, after translocation on the arteries, which is not the case after the scenic procedure. Still, I think the curve will remain higher than the atrial switch and it is still the operation of, uh, of choice for those patients. So it's palliative, but it's not more. But I think it's not less. It's a very good procedure. It's palliative and just that.